Hi, everyone. I'm Heidi Arthur, Chief Campaign Development Officer at the Ad Council. And thank you so, so much for having me here today, um, even though, once again, here we are on Zoom. Diversity has always been a core issue at the Ad Council, which has tackled so many pressing issues throughout the years. And it goes without saying that we've certainly faced a lot of challenges this year. And during this year, a bright spot is the relationship that we have with We Are All Human. When Claudia first reached out to us, of course we said, what can we do? How can we help? And from the minute we saw the Hispanic Star, we knew we had to be part of such an important initiative uniting our industry and communities across the country with a message of empowerment during such challenging times. During Hispanic Heritage Month, we worked with We Are All Human on several really inspiring initiatives, from sharing uh, the toolkit with our partners to handing over our Twitter account for We Are All Human. And in fact, one of my most you know, memorable moments is walking in the streets of Manhattan with my mask off on, not off, on, of course, and seeing um, a digital kiosk with the Hispanic star right there front and center in my community. Now, as the year wraps up, we can all look ahead to 2021, thankfully, right? I've been thinking about what we can do together to make Hispanic Heritage Month even more impactful next year. And I might find myself thinking about the early days of the pandemic when the relationships we built over time became so critical. It was definitely a feeling of all hands on deck. It was a feeling that we're all in this together and there's tremendous power in our unity. So let's remember that and embrace it and carry it forward into 2021. I'm so inspired as are my colleagues by the people we've worked with and by all of you who I know are out there today and we can't wait to keep it going in the year ahead. And thank you so, so much again for having me here today. Hello, this is one of my most important conversations during Hispanic Leadership Summit, Hispanic Heritage Month. For some people, a love-hate relationship. What do we do with one month that we shouldn't do with many others? And is it just like a check the box for many? Well, I think that Hispanic Heritage Month is an incredible opportunity for us to make sure that we have a space and a time every year to position Hispanics to showcase the incredible contributions that we have. And this year, I heard more noise about Hispanic Heritage Month than I ever did before. This session will focus on how do we make Hispanic Heritage Month bigger, bolder, and better. We have an incredible lineup of panelists that will be talking different ways on their perception about how to increase Hispanic Heritage Month's volume, how to make it more meaningful and not a half an hour bad margaritas for some CEOs to say like, check the box, let's move for the Hispanics until next year. Obviously, I am biased because this Hispanic Heritage Month for us with the Hispanic Star and, and trying to embrace as many Hispanic Star Alliance members, we were able to um, start seeing how the Hispanic Star uh, can be front and center for communications internally and externally. How the Hispanic Star can be a framework of action for companies to say like, this is my Hispanic Star employee, or this is my Hispanic Star company making promises to Hispanics about talking of substantive areas. We want to see the Hispanic Star, uh, the iconography front and center, the way that rainbow is for the LGBTQ, uh, we would love to see it everywhere, in the windows, in the t-shirts, in the talking points of people, in the ATMs of banks, uh, everywhere, all across the country. So this conversation will focus on um, bringing per perspective and start planning now, how can we make Hispanic Heritage Month 2021 moving towards the next 10 years, a bigger occasion that allows for a more uh, understanding of our community and a perception change for us to move from invisible to visible, from negative to positive, and from takers to makers. I'm going to start by welcoming uh, welcoming Carlos Goretta. Please tell us, Carlos, what do you think Hispanic Heritage Month means? What could it mean? And how do you think that we can make it bigger, bolder, and better next year? Absolutely. Thank you, Claudia. I'm so excited to be here. This is a fantastic topic and, and very timely, right? I, I think that um, when we think about Hispanic Heritage Month, we need to transcend, right? It's not just one month, even though obviously we can take the opportunity, as you talked about, you know, to really pump up the volume. But I think there are three things that we absolutely need to do. Absolutely, you know, when you think about Hispanic Heritage Month, people think about celebrating the culture. I think we need to continue to do that. But I think we need to give credit 
where credit is due. And as we do that, we need to think about how to do the count. And I'm not talking about just census. I'm talking about the count in terms of contributions, in terms of economic power, the way that we're showing up, um, you know, at the, at the corporate, um, you know, world in different boards and whatnot. So how do we do a much better 2021 is really moving beyond the box checking culture and then really focusing on true awareness of the contributions that we bring to the table. Thank you, Carla. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for having me. Very excited to be part of this important conversation and dialogue. Uh, I couldn't agree more with you that it is much bigger than one month. And, you know, the way we approached it at Bank of America, it was an opportunity to turn up the volume. But again, this is about a steady drumbeat and everything that we're doing to support the Hispanic community, whether it's our teammates within the company, um, our communities in all of the markets uh, where the Bank of America does business, or um, or whether it's uh, everything that we do to support over 10 million clients that we serve um, that are Hispanic. So um, I would say for us, it really starts at the top of the house. Um, we had an opportunity to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month this year with uh, our CEO, Brian Moynihan, um, kicking us off internally and externally. And I think that's a, a great practice because it shows that commitment from the top of the house. It really re-energizes your employee base. Um, and you know what What bigger commitment than having your, your CEO out there loud and proud, boldly supporting everything that we do um, for the community. And so that is one thing I would also say um, as, we, uh, as we think about next year, um, from a messaging perspective, I think it's important to also recognize, um, to your point, the contributions that we all make as uh, as a growing and more powerful uh, part of our economy. Um, but also know that there's there's a little bit of a of a balance because um, the community has been through a lot, uh, and so it's that striking that right balance between acknowledging the struggles and the challenges that we have faced, have overcome, and that we continue to face, while also celebrating the rich uh, heritage and the diverse um, nature of our ethnicity, because we know that we're an ethnicity that's made up of all different races and um, have have a very um, rich background. So no matter how you, how you look at it and dice it. So that's um, something that I would encourage others to think about as we head into 2021. Nancy. Thank you, Carla. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, Hispanic Heritage Month, um, I have to say, uh, has has I, through through the trajectory of my career, I've had mixed feelings about it. Um, at 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 times, it was a uh, something that um, like it's been mentioned before, it was sort of like check off the box, and um, you know how do corporations get involved and 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 so there's so many different components that i feel truly drive the change that we're looking for and in that um i there's something so key that happened this year for us at intersection and i think it started last year um when we signed the hispanic promise um and tying in the corporate responsibility part to this um, intersection, starting with our CEO, truly committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the company, and truly committed to showcasing the the different um, the diversity of the Latinos in in the organization, um, from working in sales and and marketing and research to the warehouses, um, and so in that respect, you know, having the Hispanic promise, and then. Um, being a part of the Hispanic Star launch, which is a symbol of unity, um, and then working through with the Hispanic Star hubs that work in the community, Intersection has been involved in all of those three sectors. And so I feel that it is this beautiful trinity of, of change that is happening. Um, and I feel it, and I think that, you know, Companies want to get creative. They want to know how to get involved. And I think what's happening here with um, the Hispanic Star and the Hispanic Promise and the Hispanic Star Hubs that are have formed in the community to serve um, 
tie so many bridges that have been disconnected for Hispanic heritage. And I think in 2021, because of these different areas, it'll allow space and room for us to, to really um, just, we, we were ready to the ground. I, I feel like it'll really give us more empowerment to have more of a presence um, at the corporate level, the community level, um, and then having this beautiful symbol to unify us all. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Matt, look, I uh, I take it you're not Latino. This is for us, you know, like for 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 us in the panel, uh, the Latino uh, the Latino community. This is an important discussion because it's about our future and a way like how do we actually make sure that this conversation matters and that we're elevated. But it's also you know like great to know not only that we have Latinos at heart like you but also what is the opportunity for others, like for non-Latinos to take Hispanic Heritage Month and make it big? Why is this something interesting? And how would it, wh wh why would it be interesting uh, as, an external, as an external and for the companies that you work with? Well, listen, in pure bottom line terms, you're talking about almost 20% of the United States and the richness of the tapestry of the Hispanic population filters out in so many different ways. Socially, and we've seen this the last, you know, six, eight months or so, the social fabric of our country, not just the Hispanic population, but our entire country is largely held together. The, the fabric of our very country is held together in large part by the Hispanic population. From a quality of life vantage point, the richness of what has always made America and what will continue to make America, that richness of culture, Hispanics contributing vitally. And then as Carlos started talking about economically, this is about an opportunity for all business. And today what you've done overall in bringing this group together to talk about amplification, right? You are continuing beyond and where Hispanic Star deserves enormous credit, it's creating a platform for that amplification to happen. And, you know, we saw you everywhere during Hispanic Heritage Month, and it was impressive. It takes a lot to make an impact in today's world. We're all bombarded by media. Hispanic Star is breaking through and helping tell stories that need to be told for the future of all of America, not just the Hispanic part of America. Fantastic, thank you. Um, Steve Mandala. Hi, Claudia. Thanks for having me. I, I love Hispanic Heritage Month because I think it gives us an opportunity to celebrate. But I think it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. And, and it's turned into something that has a corporate element to it that has also, I think, changed the nature of Hispanic Heritage Month. My hope for Hispanic Heritage Month, and, and I'm a gringo, but I am Latino at heart, um, is that we take this time uh, as, a, as an economic force in our country, as a political force in our country, and find a way to move from opportunity to reality. I think that, you know, we talk about the idea that this portion of the population is what's driving population growth. This consumer is driving economic growth. That every company, every marketer today is looking to reignite their growth plan in these tough economic times and get in position to succeed in the future. I think people, marketers are increasingly seeing that the Hispanic consumer can help them to do that and expand their consumer base and speak to more consumers they've never spoken to before. But it is time. It is time to turn opportunity into reality. And candidly, we at Univision are going to find a way not only to be helpful and supportive to those advertisers, but more assertive with this message too. Because there are many advertisers and marketers who talk about how they address the Hispanic consumer, but they don't. And our belief is the Hispanic consumer today deserves the exact same access to information about products and services that marketers provide to the total population. And we still see hundreds and hundreds of brands that choose over an extended period of time to be exclusionary in their messages. And not only are they I think sending the wrong message culturally, but they're hurting themselves economically. And we hope to be able to be a conduit and, a, and help to pave that path for them to make it an easy journey to see the value of this consumer and actually start realizing value of this consumer. 
It's an issue of basic respect. And I think that ultimately, that's what Hispanic Heritage Month is about, is a sign of celebration and respect. And so I think that the, we can use this as a springboard. Yes, and I agree. And it is also an opportunity for, um, for Hispanics to reflect and to be proud of our own heritage. It's amazing to understand that 77% of Hispanics do not know about their own contributions to the country. And listen, this is the time in which we're gonna start the, to work together and get a little bit more granular about what can we do. So understanding that, uh, understanding that we don't want to have only one month a year in which we uh, bring up the Hispanic agenda and nevertheless understanding as well, that there's a lot of out things out there. And this year, particularly through COVID, the social justice conversations, the Hispanic agenda was pushed to the side to a great degree. So having Hispanic Heritage Month was the only chance probably that we had to break sure that we brought it up. So we're not going to, you know, like I'm not saying that we're going to forget the rest of the year, but Carla, um, with Bono, when we were sitting down and creating Product Red, we decided to elevate World AIDS Day and make it something powerful so that we can every year celebrate, bring people together, bring an opportunity for marketers. So letting alone everything that we think about the rest of the 11 months, let's focus on this one month, September 15 to October 15. How do we make it massive? What does it mean to make it massive? What's the dream? What's the goal? And how do we equip everybody to make sure that we that everybody can do what they need to do? Do we need to create a unified messaging framework? Do we need to provide data for everybody to be speaking from the same toolkit? Like what, what are the things that we need to make a dream come true? And what would the dream look like? Who would like to start in this second part? Claudia, I'll, I'll take this one to, to, to start. Uh, I, I think there's two things. I think that a common narrative and a toolkit, as you called it, so that the messaging is the same, a unified message is going to be louder and cast a bigger shadow and a bigger profile than messaging that is fragmented. So I welcome that. And I think the Hispanic star has an opportunity to do exactly that. The second thing is, and I know they're going to get very granular here, but there's nothing more important than for the future than political power. And voter registration in both the 18 midterms and the 20 general election for Hispanics increased dramatically. Um, I think when we get final voter data, we're gonna see how the Hispanic voter overly, uh, had an overcompensation, had a big impact on this last general election. And we saw it in states of Arizona and Nevada and Florida, just in those early indications. But we're gonna see how important the Hispanic voter is to candidates and to any political party. I think the extent that we can continue to get voter registration uh, a focus and create that political power is something else that would pay a dividend in Hispanic Heritage Month. And yeah, jumping like into that. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead oh, no, no, I was just gonna jump in and, and piggyback a little bit on what Steve said earlier as well. When we think about you know turning the opportunity into reality, I think it's acknowledging, you know, there was a time where we talked about, okay, the, the opportunity of the segment, but um, from a, a corporate perspective, and as we think about um, our employees, uh, you know, we, we really think about three major stakeholders that we serve. Our teammates, our employees, we have over 200,000 teammates. Within that, we have an employee network here in the U.S. that is 18,000 strong um, advocates for everything that we do um, from a Hispanic perspective. We call it, it's our OLA network. Um, this year, our OLA network hosted over 60 events during Hispanic Heritage Month alone. But again, um, it, it is a steady drumbeat. It's just an opportunity to turn up the volume as we're all talking about um, during that month. Um, but also realizing, you know, we have over 10 million Hispanic clients that we serve, we actively serve already. So how are we engaging them? This isn't some, um, you know, theoretical discussion. How do we capture that market opportunity? We already serve them. We, um, you know, we this year, um, following um, some of the, 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 um, tragic incidents that we saw starting with uh, George Floyd and just the racial tensions, Bank of America made a billion dollar commitment um, that is specifically geared towards um, help driving, advancing racial equality and economic opportunity 
for the um, black segment as well as a Hispanic Latino population, knowing that we um, were disproportionately impacted by COVID. And that is on top of a $100 million commitment that we made uh, early on in COVID. So um, $100 million that all went towards community giving and then a billion dollars that is going, um, that is not philanthropic, um, there is some philanthropic, but it is all about helping to address some of these issues, whether it's health, housing, um, entrepreneurship, which we know um, the Hispanic community uh, is uh, significantly um, entrepreneurial in nature. Um, and, and so we're tackling those issues. But again, it, it is acknowledging um, you know, how do we, it, it's, it, it isn't just this concept of how do we get more market share? It is how do we make sure that we're serving this market? We know it's going to continue to grow. We're, we're serving our existing clients and, um, you know, do, going above and beyond. Um, this year, our commitment really started with our CEO and you, what, no matter which audience he's in front of, he's constantly talking about um, the importance of, uh, uh, representing the diverse clients that we serve and how we're continuing to do more. Um, so just and in that in that front, since you're talking about what you did and those are best practices that I would like to have every company have. Like if every company would have an eighteen thousand, you know, like Ola Group and sixty events on Hispanic Heritage Month, I call that a goal. Every company to engage every one of their employees to celebrate Hispanics and visually, you know, like and visually uh, display that. Uh, you did the internal part. I would love to for you to consider the external part going to Steve or to Matt, you know, like or to Nancy next year. So that you can display how much you love Hispanics and acknowledge them in public. But what are the tools and what would be goals, Carla, you being Hispanic, what would be the goals that you would think that we can aim for saying like for every company to do what and what tools would be necessary for that? I think it is, um, and yes, so it starts inside the house and then externally. So we absolutely, uh, again, make these big commitments. Uh, I think one of the ways that we do that is understanding that there's uh, the national um, scope, but then how do we really, at, when it comes to making a meaningful impact, that happens locally on the ground. So um, we we do work with Steve and others uh, on on this in this group um, to talk about you know here's the capabilities that we have to make uh, our clients' lives easier, but. Um, especially coming out of COVID, I think it, it has been um, working with the nonprofit partners, um, both at the national level, whether it's a partner like Unidos or others, the United States Hispanic Chamber, um, but then ha when it comes down to distributing and supporting entrepreneurship, with, you know, we CDFIs, for example, that are pumping dollars into Hispanic entrepreneurs. Um, uh, so, I think there's a, a big connection and, and understanding the full, the entire ecosystem and how we support, whether it's the wealthiest of Hispanics to the, the needs, especially at coming out of COVID that have been unprecedented this year and, um, and, and supporting all aspects of those needs. Um, and, you know, and I do think actually having a unified message um, that is one of the biggest opportunities that we have as a segment is um, all of us singing from the same hymn book. What is the opportunity? What is, um, uh, you know, how much do we really represent? And depending on which studies you look at, there's all different data. Um, but I think heading into 2021, having us all on the same uh, page when it comes right. to the opportunity and um, and how the impact that we make, that's going to make a big difference. Right. Anyone else? Yeah, I mean, I'll just add uh, a couple of things. I mean, I think preparation is key, and and I think it's fantastic that we're having this conversation this early, right? Um, I mean, traditionally, uh, I mean, I can speak from from my own experience. You know, we're not the biggest planners, right? That we we kind of you know scramble to put amazing things together, and it's it's amazing how you know how much impact we we can create. Imagine if we if we really do take the time, you know, to to enlist different viewpoints and and then really you know go through. Um, you know, what is that that message? And and I believe as we talk about that unified narrative, I think the language has to be very directive and directive in the sense that people need to take ownership of highlighting the contributions of the Hispanic market. 
Uh, we do this for countless clients and, and I cannot tell you how many times a great program just falls flat because of a lack of ownership and not only because of leadership. And I'm encouraged, you know, uh, from hearing Carla and, and the role of our, of our CEO, but um, just even ourselves, even even our own constituents, right? It's almost as, as though Hispanic Heritage Month is somebody else's responsibility, right? So I think if, if we want to make 2021 a bolder, louder, bigger year, we have to give people the directive to take ownership of their narrative in a way that they can explain right. their own value and contribution. So I, I think that that's key. Uh, ownership is is a, is a huge, huge piece of, of this and, and one that oftentimes doesn't get um, acknowledged as much. Perfect. Um, Nancy or anyone else, or shall we go into the next section? I, I can chime in there for, for um, speaking to a collective narrative. Um, I think that would be absolutely beautiful for us to support and rally behind the Hispanic star symbol um, and, and, and literally and, and see it, see it you know, as Intersection um, stepped up and did the Hispanic Heritage Month showcase of the um, Hispanic stars within the company. And across over 100 organizations, we had them featured on our digital screens um, across New York and the boroughs and also on the digital screens in Los Angeles. And, you know, it, it was a co-branded effort where Intersection um, had its brand next to the Hispanic star. That was so powerful to me. I mean, for the organization that I work for to um, align its brand with what I am proud of and, and my identity it is truly um, a testament to, to their commitment. Yeah. Claudia, I would just add, I think that platform is so important because the competitive landscape is real. Yeah. You know, the good news is that the conversation about diversity has never been more heightened in this country. NASDAQ, they're going to start looking at requiring companies to include diversity in their boards, but diversity is defined so many different ways. There's the conversation around gender. There's the conversation around the black community and the, and the black community is very vocal and that conversation in boardrooms everywhere on the news and culture is very loud. So the Hispanic voice also needs that amplification crescendoing once a year, but it's a 12 month job, not a one month job. And I think that this is precisely where we want to get. And look, I'm taking a, I'm taking enthusiastic notes. Maybe you didn't go there that far, but I'm taking that every company should meaningfully celebrate Hispanics during Hispanic Heritage Month and recognize them as contributors internally, first of all, and then externally. Second goal is to visually be able to see the Hispanic contributions wherever we are externally. And I would like to see more you know, like more again, like in Pride Month, you cannot miss it. I wouldn't want to miss Hispanic Heritage Month so that people know that one, is exists, and two, that it means positive. As long as we can get to that positioning of Hispanics as a positive contributor. So I think that the number three goal that we can talk about is to have a unified messaging framework with tools that everybody can use. And so with that, if you guys agree that more or less that could be a framework of goals that we can share. And again, for all of you watching, this is the time in which you're going to be sending us comments, questions, pledges, commitments. Every Hispanic Heritage, every Hispanic Leadership Summit that we held in the United Nations, this is a time in which we open it up for you, for your comments, for your pledges, for your ideas, because this is something that we're not going to do alone. We will do it together. But this is a great opportunity for us to turn around the story and to have Hispanics be seen, heard, and valued. So send your comments, send your commitments. We're here. Now I want to turn it around to, to more like what Matt was talking about platforms, channels, targets. Who do we want to do what by Hispanic Heritage Month? So are we talking about, we cannot conquer the world. We have to be very focused and strategic. And you know, like I love reading history and every revolution starts with a little group like us, almost like clandestine, not talking about how do we actually take over? So how do we actually take over and who do we want to change about what? One of them, obviously we've been talking about corporations. We need to have every corporation actually talking and understanding the relevance of Hispanic Heritage Month. And as Carlos said, we have to start early and invite them, give them the ownership, but give them the invitation now.
Now that that is one target. Mm -hmm. What else? What else is a target? And what would be the end result that we want? Uh, what channels? What platforms? What targets? Uh, who would like to start? Would you like to start, Steve? Sure, I'm happy to. I, let me say first that um, on behalf of Univision, I pledge whatever support that any company, any marketer wants to have. Uh, both both internally, I think that we can assist, and externally, I think we can help amplify. I think the idea of coming up with common messaging and toolkit is really important, Claudia. And the first step is just what's important. And to the extent that we could be helpful and that we could help the marshal the partners that we have in doing that, I'd be happy to try to take the lead on that. As you say, it starts with a small group who are energized about it. But I do think that, uh, you know, even if we just, well, while we want every, every company in the country to take part in this, if we just said the the 50 largest companies in this country start there, I I I tend to believe that making something bite size uh, at the start helps to build momentum. But I think if we have an ambitious goal of say again top 50 companies all celebrating and giving uh, an indication and a guide of what that celebration means both internally and externally, I think that that would be a, a real uh, terrific step in the direction of unifying. I want to ask one question there, Steve, for you. So the question is, this year we got, um, and, and this is this is a question for you, debatable, right? Like whether we do it or not. This year, precisely what you were saying, Steve, we want to get the 20 companies, the 20 most Hispanic friendly companies. We have 180 companies that have signed the Hispanic Promise, as Nancy yes. said, Carla, Bank of America, all of you guys are Hispanic Promise signatories. That means uh, making a promise to hire, promote, retain, and celebrate Hispanics in the workplace, meaning you care. You care about Hispanics, like to hire them and have them as employees. So the question is, Shall we actually aim to have a unifying messaging? I would love to hear what you're thinking of the messaging for all of you, but also celebrate together one single event to kick it off, for example, September 15 and have 50 companies sending a very strong message, all of us together to say, we care, we're going to kick it off, we're going to set the tone for all the, uh, for all the month, or do you think that it is, uh, it is actually quite, uh, uh, quite idealistic and everyone should do their own celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month? As Steve, just back to you. I'll say that I think we have to give every company room to do it in their own style and with the, with their own culture and branding. But I do think it's it's completely appropriate for us to identify and prescribe what best in class means uh, in terms of Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, month, both internally and externally. You know, internally, there's events that celebrate the employees. Who there's events that demonstrate career opportunities. There's events that broadly educate and celebrate the total employee base. So I think that we could define what best in class means for people. In fact, I, I think the power of that candidly is then to offer feedback on how they did, how, you know, which companies were actually the Hispanic stars, so to speak, of, of Hispanic Heritage Month because they were best in class. I think that, I think there's two opportunities. We either call out the ones who are non-participants or reluctant participants, and I'm loath to do that. I'm much more encouraged to celebrate those who achieve and take the high road. But I think we have to celebrate them so that we do draw out what best practices are. Right. Thank and, you. And then, Rola? Yeah, t just jumping in there is I think it's also a, a matter of acknowledging uh, the power of both private and public sector partnerships. So it's not just about the companies. It is about um, the work uh, that we can do. Um, yes, companies play a role, but the public sector also plays a role. Nonprofits play a role. Um, and so even just building on the concept of having um, you know, this group of, uh, of this clandestine group that is driving things forward. Um, within our company, we have, not only do we have the 18,000 person strong Ola network, but we have um, a, our top 200 Hispanic leaders um, that forms a highly engaged, highly active 
council that is looking at um, you know, not only the makeup of our board, but how do we help broaden um, the makeup of other company boards? Um, how do we work with organizations that are helping to um, identify talent within every one of our local communities and growing their Latino talent? Um, how are we helping the nonprofits that are um, help, uh, helping the Hispanic community? Do they have all the resources that they need? Do they have the leadership resources to be able to serve the community? So again, I think really understanding the full um, ecosystem and uh, the power uh, and breadth of the segment, it is much bigger than just corporations yep. and having that understanding and how we can tackle this across the entire um, uh, breadth and, and uh, that's really going to make the biggest impact because it is bigger than just corporations. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think that corporations, media, but also individuals play a role. If we are all talking about the unifying messaging framework, whatever it is, it is about using the data to position Hispanics as contributors, as positive contributors to the country. I think that that's, that's it. Whatever we want to call it and put on top of it and so on. But it's about that. And how do we deliver that through which platforms and to whom? Again, going back to ATMs and just like when people come and retire money during Hispanic Heritage Month, can we see something saying that did you know that Hispanics are almost 20% of the population, 12% of the GDP and so on? Those are the platforms, Matt. Thoughts? Well, listen, I, I think you also got small and medium sized businesses and the corporate sector, the public sector, the not for profit sector, as Carla said, all absolutely vital. But the fuel that drives the economy in this country are small and medium sized businesses and Hispanics over index in leading and participating in that small and medium sized business economy, which has been absolutely battered. So shoring that up translating those stories, the passion that those small and medium sized business owners have. And I think there's a great opportunity for Hispanic Star to help tell those stories in the modern day mediums. Let's face it, for the next six months, seven, eight months, we're all a captive audience. So there's a great opportunity to reach decision makers, large and small, influencers, large and small, and I think helping create storytelling platforms to tell those passionate stories and get onto our screens, large, medium, and small is a big opportunity for Hispanic Star. You have uh, you have your biggest event of the year, the Fashion Week of Advertisement, Advertising Week. Um, would you give space to Hispanic Heritage Month? Absolutely, and we will, we, oh, absolutely, Claudia. We will be back next September, I think, We've even gotten as bold and as crazy to look at dates for next fall, and it falls right in the middle of Hispanic Heritage Month, so you have our commitment. Great, Nancy. Of course, uh, from Intersection's uh, perspective, um, you know, we, we are thrilled to continue supporting. Um, I think we we received so, so many great reviews and um, uh, feedback from the Hispanic Star campaign on Link in New York. And, and the key part was, was that it was coming from people not in the business, but coming from people like um, in the communities, in the neighborhoods that were reaching out and saying, oh, this was such a cool campaign or, you know, representation matters. Um, and all of these different things that, that are so key um, to amplifying the message and, and our voice as a unified mission to say, well, you know, here we are under this one symbol saying that we have contributed, we continue to contribute and we are stronger together. So I think that encompassed and into this link campaign and, and maybe hear it on the radio uh, during ad week, amazing on Univision, you know, um, just really putting together one method would be, I feel the true bang. And I think that uh, one of the goals that I would have is to have more Nancys in more intersections donating media space the way that you did in more cities. So I would love to be able to put that as a goal. How do we actually get not only more intersections to donate this, the billboards, the radio space, the television, but also how do we get more companies using their advertising space during Hispanic Heritage Month to re redirect them to talk about Hispanics. So we will put that as one of the goals that we have for all of you listening, Hispanic Star Alliance and others, you can actually, whether you work in iHeartMedia or whether you work in a company, you can actually try to make 
um, Dara Gold, trying to donate media for Hispanic Heritage Month to showcase Hispanics as contributors to the country. Carlos. Yeah, I mean, I think um, look for for agencies and, and firms such as ours that are counseling, you know, clients on on how to do this, um, directing them, you know, to using you know that ad buy right uh, properly and and directed in, in in the proper ways is is absolutely one of our key responsibilities. Um, I mean, I, I would also you know sort of like to bring up the issue of channels. You talked about that and amplification. I mean, I think obviously there's you know there's amazing platforms like you know Univision and whatnot, but there's just the individual platform. And I think in the way that we are asking sort of the grass tops exercise of having these different corporations sign the pledge, we need to have all of our constituents who care about this also commit, right? Also, you know, make the pledge of I will go ahead and talk about this and be the hero of my own story, whether it's for the duration of that month or leading up to that month. Um, I don't think we're getting enough of that and repetition, 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 as we know it is key. If you hear it enough times and if you hear it from enough places, then you start to believe the positive aspect of you know what you're talking about here, Claudia, of creating this momentum. Um, so I, I'd encourage all of us to really look at not only what are we asking our leaders to do, but what are we asking our base to do um, as a key aspect of next year's uh, bigger, bolder, and better Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you so very much. We have to wrap up. I would love to speak with you for hours, but unfortunately we have uh, we have to wrap it up. I would like to give every one of you a big thank you. Carla, I didn't say it, but thank you so much for the commitment of Bank of America to the community. I want more people do just those 100 million again. So just like to put it out there, that would be one other goal to have more people commit the way that you guys are committing. You, want, you have parity, almost parity with your employees. That's a kind of like, we have 18% of the population population and Bank of America has almost 18% of Hispanics, which is amazing. So didn't say thank you, but thank you. And uh, Steve, we will take your word and actually do like work with us on this. Carlos, you know, like uh, this, this should be a working group for us to start uh, looking at Hispanic Heritage Month. There will be hundreds of people sending emails, uh, uh, sending uh, ideas after this conversation, but I want to wrap it up. Final words, Hispanic Heritage Month 2021 to 2025. Uh, what what are your final thoughts, uh, final words, uh, just to close this uh, first conversation? Who would like to start? Matt. Well, I think you have nothing but upside in front of you. The conversation is there where, where I think it's the right time for this. It's the right time for the country. Uh, and it means so much to us culturally, quality of life wise, economically to bottle that passion and use the month as a way to elevate all that and just keep going upwards. Fantastic. Um, Carla? Yeah, I, I, I just think it's, it's a really exciting time. We have so much um, great momentum already. Um, we have a lot of work to do still though. And, um, you know, I think all of us, one thing that I think that, um, that you guys do very well is that it, it is this collaborative approach. How do we take this unified approach um, to work together and um, make the most uh, meaningful impact possible? And I think um, all of us continuing to put our heads together and working together um, is what's really going to continue to drive that great momentum and, and move us forward. Fantastic, Nancy. I have to agree with this amazing panel. I mean, every point that was brought up um, is is inspiring and 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 understanding that you know we we are in positions that we can influence um, what happens within our organizations and and in the different sectors where we where we um, coincide with other areas. And so, I think this is such a key time in history. And this is not the time to fall back. This is the time to push forward. And if we know that we have this Hispanic star symbol that will unite us and, and have this long lasting, long term effect, we can start those movements now. And, and I think um, it, it is a beautiful time um, in that respect that you know we are creating what um, others will be coming through the doors to to enjoy as well. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, I would just say keep it simple and make it count, right? I, I mean, I think the, um, 
if we add too much complexity to this, it'll seem too daunting of a, ta of a task. Um, and this is a very simple message. We matter, we count, we have tremendous impact. Let's move on, on from the idea of opportunity, which I think you know Steve talked about, right? I'll just say one more thing. Um, I lived in Brazil for a couple of years and, and that country was always the country of the future, the country of the future. And when I hear the Hispanic population being the future of the, community of the country, it almost takes me back to that. We're the, the, the population of today. And I think uh, if we keep that message simple, straightforward, people will get it. Thank you, Steve. I, Claudia, I've enjoyed the conversation. I uh, thank my uh, fellow panelists for, for participating and I've learned from each of you. My message would be this, we have momentum. We have to guard against the loss of momentum over time, which there's a natural tendency to. In fact, we need to double down right now. And I would uh, just uh, close with the, the analogy that the power of the wolf is in the pack. And to the extent that we can collaborate and come together and unify, we'll accelerate the, the messaging and the celebration of our community and the economic growth that companies so desire today. I cannot be more grateful. Matt, Carla, Steve, Carlos, Nancy, thank you so much. When we meet next December for <coughs> Hispanic Leadership Summit, and we turn back and we see what a monster we created in a collaborative way, keeping it simple and keeping it together, we will be very happy to be part of really a historic moment for our community. So let's double down. Thank you so very much for uh, being here today. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you, Claudia. Bye. Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye.